welcome to well, what is essentially my first cast ever. If it sounds like garbage, it's going to be garbage. It is currently August the 28th, 2016. Your patch is 7.06F. This is the Reddit 2, Dota 2 League Season 12. It's the feed stack versus RA first pick Kappa. We are just a little past the international here in 2017, so we're going to be probably seeing some pretty standard international style bands. Going to be Nyx Assassin to first band from the feed stack. I have literally no idea how these two teams measure up against each other. As far as I know, this is going to be some great NA Dota. So you never know. Could be good. Could be bad. I'm going to be waiting here to see what exactly our first pick cap is going to ban. I expect it's going to be probably some standard Lich, Night Stalker, maybe Earthshaker, if they think that there is a GH wannabe on the feed stack here. You kind of never know. Radiance ban. There's that Earthshaker ban. So yeah, they're going to be fearing that GH style Earthshaker. It's been, even with the nerfs that he got in 7.06, he's still a very powerful hero. Very disruptive fissures and kind of easy to get kills off of him. Night Stalker will be the next ban out of the feed stack here. They're kind of just doing standard bans. Maybe not everybody did too much homework on Ten seconds to go. excessive strength from every team, so they're just gonna kind of do some good old Five meta seconds. bans. First pick is gonna go all the way to the feed stack. Kind of open themselves up for some nice. Uh, kind of early game first picks here. Probably going to open up with a support, not really show exactly what's going to happen right off the bat, but you never know. You never know. Maybe they first pick Meepo and just decide that screw it. This is the way we're going to go. Let's see Ari first pick Kappa here burn some uh, burn some of the reserve time on the second ban. It Radiant looks like they're not exactly pick. sure. It's going to be Caudal. Essentially, if you were playing against Liquid, you just ban GH out in a nutshell, which opens up that first pick for a Shadow Shaman on the feed stack. Likely going to be playing a position 4. Although in the past he was per played as a position 2, so maybe we're going to see a revival of the mid Shadow Shaman. Early push, TI4, newbie, deathball strats, although I have my doubts. Five seconds. I'm going to see exactly now, our first pick Kappa is going to have the opportunity to reply with two heroes. Going yeah, into their been. reserve time again. <laughs> going for that Lich, kind of a no-brainer there. Lich is ultimately disruptive, can be played on the safe lane and give his safe leader an easy time. Being played on the off lane and just making sure that it's hell for that safe laner on the opposite team to get any sort of decent farm in. Or even played in the mid and just Can't guarantee that that position go. 2 is going to be going unmolested and mostly uncontested. Five seconds. We'll have to wait and see here to see what a position they're going to be playing. Problem with learning, or excuse me, running a lich in the offlane, of course, is that you kind of have to put your initiator somewhere else. You know, the feed stack, pretty confident in their picks. They're kind of banning and picking within the first 30 seconds, going into exactly zero seconds as their reserve time. Meanwhile, Ari first pick Kappa. I'm just going to call him AFPK. Or maybe just Kappa. I don't know. It's a long name. Uh, kind of going deep into their reserve time. They're not going to have a whole lot of time left for their third, fourth, and fifth pick here or any other following band. So I hope they have their plan set. Like their second pick is ready to go, and it is going to be a Weaver revealing possibly a core. The Weaver position four or three isn't exactly unheard of before. Uh, Weaver, you know, is a hit or miss against Shadow Shaman. Shadow Shaman doesn't have the health pool exactly to yeah, stop a Weaver, but if he gets some sort of lockdown on that Weaver, Weaver will be punished quite heavily for it, and we'll kind of have to wait and see. Uh, if who's gonna gonna get the advantage there? Feet stack will reply with a pretty quick Sand King here. Reliable off laner, reliable even jungler after a while, and kind of all around pain in the ass for people to deal with. Uh, Sand King, at this point, is pretty decent against Lich. He can kind of get out of the way of Chain Frost and 
be a general nuisance to deal with Dancing in a lane if he just sandstorms and isn't hit by the kind of constant barrage of uh, Five seconds. Dire, of uh, blasts from Lich and can't be really harassed at a lane. It will be replied with both a Lena and Sniper bands from each respective team. Looks like they're gearing up to tailor their mid matchups to their desired opponents. Looks like Feedstack isn't exactly Ten wanting burst damage. And uh RE first pick Kappa doesn't look Five like they seconds. want to take this too late with the lich or the excuse me with the sniper ban here. Radiance ban. It'll also be an outworld devourer ban, so really focused on the uh mid bands here for these second set of bands on both teams. Just kind of dire uh, Yeah, and a faceless void ban. Faceless void would have been a pretty decent counter here. Both Shadow Shaman and Sand King kind of need to be able to use their spells freely. They need to get pretty close, even though Shadow Shaman is a ranged hero. He kind of he needs to get a little bit close in order to hit, and Faceless Void can of course be a general nuisance with that. To go. So we're gonna be seeing what exactly uh AFPK here wants to respond with. They kind of you know, the mid pool is getting smaller and smaller, so they may, may need to pick that mid within the next two picks. Now, the only player that I know is Villain here, and I know that he is going to be a Templar Assassin picker. Kind of, whether he wants to or not. Radiant's pick. It's going to be a Clockwork Offlane. Dyer's Pretty pick. fantastic against Admiral both uh, Sand King and Shadow Shaman. A general pain in the ass for both, simply because, you know, two ch uh, channel spells on Shadow Shaman and a semi-channel spell from Sand King, or at least a wind-up channel on Sand King to be able to do what he needs to do. Gives a lot of vision, may be able to scout out that Sand King before Ten he can blink in. Uh, I really like the clockwork pick here, he's pretty disruptive. Five so, seconds. Oh, oh, one second. Sorry about that, small family emergency in the middle of nowhere, because of course that was what was going to happen. Uh, there was a Kunkka pick while I had to run away here. Uh, Kunkka here is going to be pretty darn good. It's going to add a lot of tankiness and punish some any kind of sort of sustained damage. Um, so anything short of really expensive, extensive burst Kunkka is going to be really... Solid for that, also a pretty direct counter to Clockwork if he's not caught in the cogs, Five of course, seconds. because he literally can't miss Torrent, so long as Clockwork is in his own cogs. The reply from AFPK is going to be the Viper mid, that'll be probably played by Villain, I think he's still their mid player, I could be wrong. Uh, you know, Viper, the old joke, win lane, lose games, it's kind of hard to know. So, we'll have to wait and see on that one. Viper's okay here, a lot of magic damage coming out of the uh, feed stack lineup so far. Kind of not really anything physical going deep into it, so he's going to be hard to kill. Actually, a lot of uh, AFPK's kills are going to be hard to kill between Frost Armor, kind of the elusiveness of Weaver, of course, if he isn't caught up by Shadow Shaman, Clockwork being tanky just naturally, and Viper being tanky just naturally. They're kind of going to need... A Kind of a good damage response out of AFP, or excuse me, out of the feed stack, because they're not there yet, yeah, although they still have two picks. Venom Venomancer Mancer. will be that pick. I'm not sure if I really like this one. Of course, it is really good against the Weaver, because it's such sustained damage that Weaver, um, kind of the rewind for Weaver isn't going to be doing enough. It is Ten not so good against Viper, go. pretty darn good against Lich. Um, kind of they're lacking the ability to Five keep seconds. him away from the fights other than that clockwork catching him. So I like it. It's uh, I imagine it's a core Venomancer, probably going to be played in that safe lane. Um, possibly a jungle one, but you never know. Looks like we are going to ban a Terror Blade uh, from AFPK. I guess it might have been a Terror Blade mid, or they're expecting a Shadow Shaman mid. Hard to know. Um... But it looks like the feed stack is either going to be grabbing a, a mid or a safe lane Five here. Seconds. I imagine it's going to be a mid hero, just for the Venomancer uh, safe lane carry position here. We are, of course, going to have the feed stack having the pick right after this next ban of theirs. 
AFBK is going to need to be quick on their final pick. They only have two seconds of reserve time. The feed stack kind of finally went into their reserve time a little while back, and we'll have to be kind of trying to guess if that weaver is going to be played off lane or safe lane, I guess, is kind of their biggest worry here. Are they going to ban an off laner? Or are they going to be banning a safe laner? I imagine this Weaver is safe. Clockwork is your pretty decent off laner here. He doesn't need any help. And he benefits a whole lot from solo experience. So I doubt he will be. I uh, will be seeing a Weaver support. But you never know. It's kind of one of those things, right? It's just people can get pretty crazy in their ideas. And if you kind of throw the enemy team in for a loop, then you might be able to give him a surprise. Really going on the reserve time. Looks like they're going to ban the anti-mage. They're expecting the sweeper to be a support. Of course, very rare for somebody to leave a support last pick here. So it's hard to tell. And we'll be seeing what the... F Feed stack is going to reply Ten with here to go. in terms of uh, being able to answer to this kind of very tanky lineup from AFPK, Weaver notwithstanding. They got some pretty decent frontliners. It's going to be very hard to get to that Lich. Looks like their answer is going to be Storm Spirit. Uh, so they have an answer to get to that back line and being able to disrupt the Lich and forcing him to use an ultimate on somebody who's not going to be stacking up with their team. I do like this one. It still seems to be lacking a little bit of damage. Uh, of course, Venomancer shores Damn it up pretty heartily, but it's a lot of reliance on magic damage. It's going to be a Lycan last pick. So yeah, it is going to be a position for uh, Weaver here. He will be supporting. Clockwork will be in your off lane. And Viper will be in your mid, of course. I don't know, both teams, it's kind of hard to say, right? Like, in professional teams, this is a bit different because we have all the history with the players and, and seeing how they're each going to interact with their respective heroes. I do like the Feed Stack's ability to control uh, both X marks the spot. And Sand King and Shadow Shaman is a tremendous amount of control and, and being able to stop people to do what they need to do. Um, X is pretty darn good against Weaver because Weaver does need that mobility. And of course, Shadow Shaman is great if he can get the shackles or the hex onto Weaver, to but Weaver is just a support in this one. So, you know, kind of these squishy cores between Venomancer and, and Shadow Shaman, I wouldn't say is a core, but the squishy uh, heroes between Venomancer and uh, Shadow Shaman, Lycan is kind of the hero to shred them apart and, and really get in there and do some damage. So I kind of, you know... Not knowing any of these teams, only knowing one player from one team, and knowing this is some good old-fashioned NA Dota, it's kind of hard to tell if we're going to have either a stomp or, or a pretty even game here. It has the potential of going late. Both of these teams, you know, they're not really on a timer. Lich stops doing damage later on, but... So here we go, I'm going to apologize in advance because my camera work is going to be shoddy. It may be as shoddy as my casting, but you do never know. So I'm just going to introduce both teams here as they go straight ahead for the tactical pause. It is going to be Doob Cookies on Venomancer, Mr. Matthew on Storm Spirit, Ripley on Sand King, Sexy Steve on Shadow Shaman, and Dembe here on the Kunkka playing for the Radiant side. Looks like it's going to be a Venomancer safe lane as far as this uh, little screenshot's giving me. On the Radiant side, it is going to be uh, Fucktorn Esports, I guess, or Satan on the Lich. Uh, Villain on the Viper. It is going to be Chadley on the uh, Clockwork here. Aosynth on Weaver and Ari on Lycan. I was, yeah, I guess Ari named after Ari here. So, looks like the teams are ready to go. They will be positioning themselves appropriately here. All right, carry on. Let's see here. Yeah, it looks like the lanes are going to be... It's going to be a solo Venomancer bottom so far. As it looks like Feed is making their way up top. We do have a smoke on the Shadow Shaman. So, I wouldn't be surprised if, the, if this ended up being... 
kind of an early game gank. Yeah, there they go. They are going to go for the smoke. Looks like they will try to wrap around here. It is going to be a solo viper sitting up here. That's kind of unexpected. They might be able to catch him out. So we will kind of have to wait and see if this is going to work. There they go. They did spot him. He is hiding in the trees now. The smoke did break, but that's going to be him. He was going to get shackled. He is going to get torrented. There will be the event. Yeah, this is a very dead viper. That first blood is going to be drawn by the feed stack here. We'll go straight to Kunkka on Dembe here. So that will be the first blood, and I won't miss it, which is uh, rare. I'm not going to lie. Looks like there will be a response here from our love stack. Looks like they will force the Venomancer out of his comfort. And, and away we'll we steal go. that rune at least. It will still be two runes per team. As they uh, make their way in other lanes, it looks like looks like Feedstack is actually kind of ready to punish again. They use a second Ooh. smoke mm -hmm. here. Looks like these two are on their way. They will maybe run into this Clockwork. Smoke will break on Shadow Shaman. Clockwork will smoke and immediately break his own smoke, so he has to know something's gone wrong. He's gonna actually walk back into the enemy team. It will be bad. That Shackle will show up. But I don't think this is enough to kill him. It looks like a... Alright. Well. Things happened. We're gonna just believe it. It's a pretty strange lane. It's gonna be Storm Spirit versus Lycan in the mid here. I don't imagine Lycan's gonna have much of a good time. And he may be able to do quite a bit of harass with those wolves. But, you know, Storm Spirit... He's going to be able to outrange him and kind of get a lot of last hits on him. Of course, leading a really 4-2. It is relatively early. Meanwhile, at the top lane, it looks like there's going to be another gank here on Villain. This Viper very likely going down. This Shadow Shaman already making a tremendous amount of, uh, you know, movements and impact in this game very early on, which is exactly what you want if you're a Shadow Shaman. It allows you to more or less get to the start that you want. He's still level 1. But, you know, those shackles are no joke. It's already netted them two kills and disrupted mid quite a bit. Looks like, meanwhile, in the off lane, Chadley here on this clockwork, gonna be trying to support an off lane Weaver. Looks like the Weaver is gonna be here farming as a position one. They had to sacrifice that uh, Viper up in the top to kind of be a non factor, so. It's not all bad here for, uh... Oh, there we go. It's gonna be another one. This will be the death of this Lycan, guaranteed. Those shackle ranges are absolutely absurd. Looks like it's gonna be just nothing but rotations from Shadow Shaman and Kunko all game long, so... Uh, we will be having, uh, Quite a bit of movement coming out early, so some nice NA Dota strats. Meanwhile, it will be Viper versus the Sand King top lane. Looks like it's, you know, depending. They're just going to be room. As we say that, the room has turned. We have not enough mana for a shackle, so I don't know if they're going to be able to kill that Weaver. Looks like, oh, that Weaver. Yeah, he's very much dead. He had enough mana for the uh, Ether Shock, so that will kill him instantly. So, you know, Feedstack getting off to a really good start here. Um, kind of due to some weird laning choices from the Dire here. I'm not exactly sure. I mean, Lycan is getting a heck of a lot of farm. I was absolutely wrong about him not being able to farm. He's getting some good last hits in despite his death. Looks like he is very easy to harass out the Storm Spirit. Sorcerer decides to come in and fight. Meanwhile, it looks like... no, nope, that would be a not very successful gank. On this Venomancer, he is chewing through his regen pretty heartily, but he does still have a 1-6 wand, wand charges, and that Mango, of course, will prop him back up, so he's gonna be just fine. There's not a tremendous amount of kill potential coming out of the Dire here. Lich is gonna be your busybody here, denying range creeps, as one does, making sure that that Storm Spirit has a pretty bad time in the lane, so that's appropriate. We are of course looking to see 
what Kunkka and Shadow Shaman are going to be up to. In terms of their rotations, they're going to be the big playmakers here out of the Radiant team. Uh, looks like they will catch themselves another, though I don't think this is enough for a kill. So we will have Eosynth. He will be able to grab himself a bounty rune and make his way back onto the lane. Bounty. Looks like they might get something on Shadow Shaman here. Shadow Shaman, of course, not exactly the tankiest hero and kind of useless when he's got the, uh, uh, excuse me, battery assault on him. So he will go down. That will be the Weaver getting the kill. And making his way back bottom, it looks like we do have Kunkka ready to set up here. Looking to make an impact at the top lane. Hard to tell if he will actually be able to do anything here without Shadow Shaman. Um, I, I mean, Lycan is just so damn tanky, and at night, so long as that Howl is up, he is relatively hard to kill. But still, you know, we're gonna have to see, that will be the Torrent combo. They will catch two of them, and it will go for the Shackles, into the Cogs, and nothing is gonna happen. So it looks like a bit of a chest-thumping motion here, as they square off against each other here in the mid. That will more than suffice as both teams are happy letting their safe laners kind of have some uncontested farm while their off laners are safe as well. Lich is going to be going back up top. He hasn't been able to do much yet. He is kind of going for the 201 build. Not exactly focusing on being able to get a lot of experience, but rather being able to do some more harass. Meanwhile, that Weaver... That Weaver will be okay, he did spot out the gank coming in, so they don't have much of a way to catch him, so he'll be fine. And they have brought Clockwork and Lich back down here, so maybe looking for a counterplay. Looks like that setup isn't exactly ready, so... Looks like we're not gonna have a showdown quite yet. As we move our camera back to the middle lane here with my shitty camera work, that isn't smooth. We're gonna have to continue here. You know, it's hard to say who's coming out too much on top. Some very good kills early on from uh, from the feed stack here, but it's kind of petered off in the last three or four minutes, and the farm out of this Lycan is fantastic for him. He's getting kind of everything that he wants in this lane. Um, he is going to be finishing off the uh, power treads here. Taking some harass, but he, he's so bloody hard to kill. Every time he howls, it's like he's just channel ting again. Even with that channel. Oh, looks like we did have a Kunkka gank here along with the uh, Shadow Shaman, but it wasn't successful. And so this Weaver looking to get in there, he's going to go for the Courier rather than Shadow Shaman. Not sure if it's the right idea because it looks like the Courier will survive and Shadow Shaman will get a return kill instead as Weaver really forces him away to try to kill that courier, so not exactly successful. That turnaround gank costing Clockwork his life for no exchange. Weaver, of course, no boots, just a belt of strength here in order to give him some survivability. And uh, we'll kind of not be able to do much here. I mean, the big thing, the big takeaway here is that Viper has been kind of left on his own. He's fully recovered now. Despite uh, kind of getting those two early deaths in the game, he's second on the last hit chart with the, by far the most denies, really lane controlled. Sand King is doing well for himself, don't get me wrong, but he's not up there. Weaver, even with his death, has managed to keep up, so it does look like the Dire has a, a farming comeback here, even if they don't have necessarily a kill lead at the moment. But, you know, that middle game is super dangerous for them. That Venomancer, level 6, level 7 time is absurdly strong. He does a tremendous amount of damage and is kind of impossible for Weaver to counteract. He has, Weaver takes a metric ton of magic damage here. The Venomancer did not commit to his ultimate level 6, so looks like there won't be a, really a kill there. Uh, just a metric ton of harass. Man, if it wasn't for that ring of health, he might have actually been pretty dangerous here. Looks like that Kunkka, he missed. I'm not sure this is the right move here. 
there is going to be a ward placed down, and this is going to be the death of Sand King, even with the stun combo. It's just like I said, they're just lacking damage from the draft so far. Storm Spirit may be able to come back later, but, you know, these heroes, especially Viper, right, and Max Corrosive Skin, he's not exactly going to be taken down by magic damage anytime soon, unless they bring, you know, overwhelming force, so... I'm not really seeing the kill potential here like there used to be. Oh, looks like this wolf is pissed, but it's kind of... Oh, it will be able to stun the uh, shackles out, but they will get a return kill as Clockwork is killed for the Shadow Shaman. A pretty decent trade for the Raiden here, but they did have to commit, you know, two or three teleports in to be able to, to respond, so... Not the best. Looks like Weaver is attempting to do some harass damage here, but I think at this point Venomancer is by far the better harasser than a Weaver, especially without a hood on. Um, he's just so much sustained damage, right? You can go and visit as much as you want. If you're still poisoned, it doesn't matter. You're still poisoned. Gosh, just look at how irritating that is. And Venomancer just stays safely behind his wards. Max wards, max poison sting, and just... Now comes the tower push. So, we will likely see an early tower come out of the Radiant here, but you never know, maybe they're going to be looking at this clockwork to be able to do something, but it is 10 minutes and it is a level 3 clockwork, so not exactly the best timing here. He was able to get a few kills, but kind of always died in response. We'll be seeing the Venomancer put quite a bit of harass here, you know, tower below 400 HP. Viper gonna be sitting up here. It looks like Viper and Shadow Shaman, but again. Okay, so they will commit the ultimate. They will have the shackles, but look how little damage that this Viper is taking. I'm not sure they got enough to kill him. And it looks like Viper might actually just get a return kill. He might still die here to the Shadow Shaman. There was, meanwhile, a kill on uh, Venomancer at the bottom lane as this Clockwork did manage to snag him and was backed up by both the Weaver and the Lich. So it is a two for one trade. Uh, the Viper did go down, but gets a return kill, you know, kind of on a 2 versus one gank. He's just so bloody tanky against that magic damage that it never really mattered. So, it looks like Shadow Shaman, quite up there in levels, will drop his words, try to get some really uh, tower damage in here while Venomancer's doing the same bottom. Like I said, now the bottom tower is below 250 HP, and the top is going to be probably below 5. Uh -huh. may even say below 400 by the time these wards are cleaned up, but we'll have to wait and see on that one. Nope. Uh, just a little bit off. 411. Oh, bad math on my end. Meanwhile, like it continues to farm. Now up to his armlets. Kind of never left the mid lane, neither did Storm. Neither of these two mid players wanting to make moves at the moment. They're quite content with the farm that they're getting. All these actions in the side lanes keeping the focus away from them. And they're both kind of getting their job done, you know. This Storm Spirit... Maybe not getting as much as this Lycan, just because Lycan's last hit is just so absurd, but still doing pretty well for himself, sitting on a soul ring, sitting on boots, having 800 gold to sit on. He sit all, sits on a lot of things, apparently. Meanwhile, this Venomancer, you know, he's gonna go be able to do what Venomancer does, jungle and lane at the same time. He did use his ultimate, I guess probably when he was ganked. But it did not lead in a kill that particular time. I don't know if you actually want to go in on this weaver, but you never know. Meanwhile, oh, I totally missed that. Clockwork, kind of getting caught right next to the shrine. Not the best getting killed by that support trio. We'll pay for it with his life, so there is that that he has to worry about. Meanwhile, you know, Viper moving along. Oh, sorry, that will be that bottom tower going down to that Venomancer. I really don't think you want to do this, Weaver. You know, the harass is pretty decent, but that poison damage, man, it's just so much. Meanwhile, eh, no, you don't need to worry about poison damage when you are going to do that kind of damage, but... Will he be able to make it out? Yes, he will, so Venomancer will survive. Meanwhile, mid is going to take some harass damage from the Storm Spirit. Looks alright. You know, this lead isn't really increasing or decreasing on either end. So we will be seeing possibly this mid tower go down. It looks like both teams are just kind of playing that game, but that Kunkka boat is going to make the difference here. That Lich ultimate will come out, and the tower will go down, but this will cost them their Shadow Shaman. 
it's just way too much damage. Storm Spirit did not feel like committing. He did not have a tremendous amount of mana nor health, as a matter of fact. So they were just content with getting the tower and running. But it will cost them their Shadow Shaman and all their Shadow Shaman awards. So, you know, Radiant getting way more map control than Dire at this point. You know, the Radiant Towers pretty much are all fully intact. The top tower took some chip damage, but is largely ignorable. Meanwhile, Dire has is about to actually Radiant lose their last tier one, up. so it is kind of this difficult snowballing section of, you know, Venomancer and Shadow Shaman are both great tower pushers, they're a pain in the butts to deal with, and if you kind of go on them, you might be taking way too much damage yourself. It looks like this Weaver is going to get spotted out. This will probably get the Weaver killed. No, Weaver is going to be able to get a rewind. He is going to have to rewind. There we go. So this is actually going to be fantastic because it will get two kills for the Dire on the Radiant. Possibly even three. The Kunkka boat is going to come out fly. It will get absolutely no one. Storm Spirit is trying to make a move, but he's by himself. It looks like he will at least get the clockwork. Viper and the rest were not exactly in a position to fight back, so we will have to more or less wait and see. I wonder if my volumes are decent. I doubt it. Probably my volumes are terrible and all you can hear is a bunch of fighting. But we're gonna have to kind of keep an eye on that later as I figure out all the bugs and kinks to casting because I don't do this. I think it would just be fun to try. So, we do have a setup here on the top tower. Looks like Dyer are tired of being the only ones to lose towers, so they are putting that lichen with his level 2 wolves, ready to go on this tower. Again, they're kind of relying on their own innate tankiness and the ability to to kind of survive off of these ultimates to, to go into a fight, but under a tower, it's probably not enough. So, at the moment, they will back off, do some chip damage, and move on with their lives. Net worth is kind of the story that you expected to tell. That Lycan with his fantastic mid-start is at the top. Kind of nearly a f almost a full 2,000 ahead of Storm Spirit here. Looks like that will be the wolf coming out. That will probably be the death of Shadow Shaman. The miss on the impale is going to cost him the Xbox to spot, however, doing really, really good work. Meanwhile, Clockwork is going to take some damage. The Lich Ultimate comes out somewhere in the back. The wolves are now doing the work. They're going to get two kills here. The Lich Ultimate has managed to kind of just force everybody back and... Dire, again, just innate tankiness, better team fight, really hard to get into, and the lack of a Venomancer on the Radiant side is going to cost them their first tier 1 tower, excuse me, their second tier 1 tower, as Mid had already gone down to the Weaver. And so they're kind of going to rely on a split push farm here, Venomancer of course, hard to kill, Lich no longer able to stun him out of a TP, so, as I say that however, this will probably be the death of a Venomancer. There is no hook. And so he will actually get out of it alive. This invis clockwork maybe should have been the first one to go in instead of the weaver. But you know that four staff made all the difference. If it wasn't for the four staff he would have been able to cog them out of it and push them away or maybe even just run up in battery assault. But sometimes that's just the way things go. Clockwork he's recovering. He didn't have a great laning stage to start out with, kind of having to save people's butts. So, you know, he's there to do the impact that he needs to do. He's going to have his four staff probably within the next four or five minutes. Lycan is going to go for the BKB, not going kind of for this TI level. Uh, in a kind of Arteezy build with the Necro books and whatnot. He's going for a pure farming build, which is fine. I'm not uh, criticizing that at all. It's just going to be, they're going to have to find the fights. So we'll have to wait and see. A nice D ward here coming up from the Lich. And a uh, illusion rune here for the clockwork. Top. Looks like we are going to have a bit of a skirmish here. There are four people from the Radiant Top. It looks like they really want this Viper. It will probably cost him his life. Both the Kanka Ultimate and Venom Ultimate and the uh, Shadow Shaman Ultimate. And here comes a Sand King Ultimate on top of all that. But where did the Sand King Ultimate go? He was stopped by 
holy cow okay this one really bad for the radiant they're gonna have to go a full retreat here look like we are gonna have one unsuccessful teleport and kanka he will not be making his way out so a four for one exchange that uh, viper did go down and so did that tower but i mean really when you expend literally every one of your ultimates except for storm spirits because you can't in order to get a viper and tower kill and lose four I mean, I'm no good at math, but it doesn't take much to, to realize that that wasn't exactly what you wanted. It just feels like the response time from uh, from the Dire here and the, the ability to respond and punish these ganks is pretty severe. So we are going to have to see if Storm Spirit, I mean, Clockwork isn't exactly a Storm Spirit killer. He can, you know, do exactly what he just did and just run. I mean, well, it looks like the Dire are looking to expand their control here and and see what they can do about uh, making sure that they don't lose all their map control. The Radiants still have a tremendous amount of uh, anti-push and ability to push down towers so it's uh, you know it's not exactly bad for oh I completely lost control there it's not exactly bad for the uh, Radiant here either they can resort to split pushing you know Storm Spirit, notoriously hard to get away from, but... <sighs> Dyer do have their way to push back as well. I mean, Lycan... You know, he's not going for Necro Book, but... If he really feels like he needs to, it's not exactly unheard of. I'm gonna have a little... Crossing here in the Radiant Woods. Looks like we have another Invis Rune coming up from this Clockwork. Trying to go make a play happen. You know, there are... Quite a bit of, uh, oh, looks like that is going to happen. Exactly, that four staff will get out the Venomancer, but this is the problem, right? Venomancer, he has no escape from a Lycan. Lycan has a metric ton of HP. Will get hit by the Kunkaboat, Boat, but it feels like it just, it never matters. And the Storm Spirit, you know, okay, he's not going to die, even with that rocket, but ugh, it just feels like they never get to make the moves that they want. And meanwhile, you know, we're going to have a two-man push here at the bottom. They will equalize the uh, tower deaths here. So now the Dire in a pretty solid lead. Their, their net worth is growing and growing here. And just the, on the, off the back of this mid Lycan, who did so fantastic on f uh, the Storm Spirit, you know, it looks like that uh, Kunkka Shadow Shaman were never really able to kill him. Uh, and enough times or control is late enough times plus that lich coming in denying the experience from storm spirit denying the money from storm spirit and he really needs both has kind of has made all the impact in the world we're gonna have oh, nothing happening here got excited about nothing so to speak so we're kind of gonna have to wait and see if the radiant feel like hey do we have to take a team fight at this point can we take a team fight at this point it always feels like when radiant want to take a team fight they're always one man short or two man short to the venom of the storm spirit that isn't there and then even though they start well they never have enough to go and follow through especially with the uh tankiness coming out of the dire it looks like this might be the death of clockwork oh the range it will happen they will be able to get a kill on this clockwork it's going to commit to three or four here including the storm spirit but it will happen even with that howl from like and it looks like it's not enough to to save the rattle trap from his inevitable demise on that particular one we'll be seeing now the form keeps going ahead Take a look at some item builds really quick. Some pretty standard stuff. Viper managed to get a recovery Midas. I don't know if it's exactly what he wanted. Going late against Radiant is weird, but not the worst. It looks like it's doing them just fine, that's for certain. They can kind of just rely on the back of this Ember Farming Lycan. Lycan, of course, has his BKB. It is a 10 seconds. Essentially, at this point, he's unstoppable in these team fights. There's nothing they can do to, to control him. They can't X him anymore. They can't slow him. I mean, they can never slow him realistically, but they can't stun him. They really... Lycan is just going to be going ham in these fights. Lich, he's got a pretty decent mech timing. Um, kind of going for that team fight, trying to stave off some of the Venomancer damage and trying to stave off some of, you know, that continual tick. It looks like while I was talking, Storm Spirit will get a pretty easy pick off of that bottom lane. They were kind of aiming for it for a pretty long time, so it's not too surprising. 
Meanwhile, Dyer looking to make a move. The Wars will spot them out, of course, being kind of one of the best vision skills, as long as you can't have a Night Stalker since it was banned out. So there would be something to say about that. Some harassment damage out of the Weaver. So items, where are we going? It looks like, yeah, let's start with Weaver. Weaver is going to go for that Lincolns. Um, you know, being able to kind of deny that first control out of the Shadow Shaman if he's not fast enough is pretty important, right? Shadow Shaman kind of wants to blink and hex instantly or blink and shackles instantly if he can. You know, if he gets that uh, Aether Shock out to break the Lincolns, you might have time to weave away. So that Shukuchi can be pretty important. So a pretty decent item choice, makes him tankier. Kind of pretty standard Weaver stuff. Uh, we are going to have Clockwork. Clockwork still working on that, uh... On that four staff, not really getting it. That death probably costing him more than he wanted to. Meanwhile, raiding here, they are going to drop the wards. They are going to go onto this Roshan. They don't have. Oh, never mind. Looks like the Dyer are going to come in. They're going to commit to it, and that will be the death of Shadow Shaman, and that will be the ult coming out from Sand King. It will hit on two. It looks like that will probably be the death of Clockwork. Meanwhile, Lich has managed to scare off Storm Spirit to the top there. That Venomancer Ultimate will come out, and he will try to TP away. Will he get it? He will, and he will. Looks like he survives in base. That Lycan with the BKB and Armlet activated will manage to scare the rest of him off. The buyback from Shadow Shaman has come in. He will get the Hex and the Shackle onto uh, the Lycan, but it will be simply a dieback on the Shadow Shaman, committing too much here. Storm Spirit trying to do damage, but just, just the damage. Again, I said it off the draft. It's just totally lagging out of the Radiant side. They do have the control. They do have the map presence, but when it comes to raw damage, this is going to be a free one for the Dire. And meanwhile, while I say that, it looks like Weaver, he will get a solo pickoff here on this Kunkka. So... <laughs> At this point, I will be very honest with you, I don't see how the Radiant come back from this. It just looks like, you know, they have one damage dealer. At this point, it, it looks like Venomancer has been solved, right? Viper is going to take no damage. His Corrosive Skin is way too much. You know, 25% bonus magic resistance. If he really wants to, he can get somebody on his team to build him a pipe, and then he'll be immune and just ignore the fight. Like, he can just pop that BKB. Yes, he'll take the damage afterwards, but no, he doesn't really give a crap. He's got way too much health. He can always howl for it or lifesteal his way back up. And he can't be controlled in fights anymore, right? You saw them, the first time that Shadow Shaman died, it kind of never mattered what Shadow Shaman was doing because, well, first of all, he was cogs and killed relatively quickly. But second of all, even if he wasn't, what are you going to do? You're not going to be able to control this this Lycan, and this Lycan is going to bolt for you, right? You have the lowest amount of HP, you have essentially no armor, you are very integral to the control of the enemy team, and when you're sitting on 4 armor and 1260 HP, you are food. So it's not exactly going to go your way. So Dire here in a pretty strong control... Um, it looks like they're just kind of going to keep pressing their advantage. Lycan more than content to take the double damage rune and farm to his heart's content. Clockwork looks like he has he has his four staff finish, so now he's going to be even more irritating and has a direct counter to the Kunkka uh, Torrent because he can just, you know, push himself out of his own cog, so that'll be even more trouble now. Of course, they can't get a handle on the Storm Spear. Storm Spear will pretty much never die, up to 13 Bloodstone charges, pretty much because he only gets the one kill. But, you know, he may not die, but it kind of doesn't matter because he can't get kills either. So, you know, the one damage dealer out of the Radiant side not doing exactly what uh, what Radiant want, which is to be that overwhelming force, which he, he kind of never could be in the first place. So, you know, he has that Orchid now, he has the Bloodstone, he's doing pretty good for himself. You know, he is the top net worth for the Radiant, but he sits third overall. But he's just, he's not enough, right? So your Venomancer has to shore up. And what does Venomancer have to do for himself? Well, he has a Ghost Scepter. He's going to be hard, relatively, he's going to be able to get away from Lycan for a little while. He also has the Hurricane Pike, so he can further put himself between distance and another. But it's just really difficult, right? And you take a look at this, right? Just harassing. It's going to be this Lich. It's going to be this Weaver. And the Lich Ultimate comes out as he four steps himself closer to Shadow Shaman. That was exactly what Lich wanted. Not exactly what the Radiant were looking for. It's a bit of a stroke of bad luck for sure. It looks at like the ultimate and the force half came out at exactly the same time. But, you know, even if he didn't, I'm not exactly sure that uh, Venomancer would have been able to get away from that one. Weaver at this point, you know, he's not exactly the biggest damage dealer, but, you know, the swarm uh, Swarmlings are enough at this point. They're very dangerous to kill. 
And then it looks like Dire gonna take the advantage. They're two men up. They know that the Venomancer's ultimate's down, even the Venom, even when the Venomancer comes back up. So it's not like there's gonna be a TP into a Venomous Gale and, and all sorts of damage, or excuse me, Poison Nova. And so they're not exactly worried, right? And now that just means free tower. You can just look at just how fast that tower goes down. That Lycan, of course, the moment he howls, it's the moment you lose a tower. And it's just, you know, wolves need no armor, etc., etc. It looks like it's just going to be a push towards bottom. It's going to be an Aether Shock. There's going to be a Hurricane Pike out of that Viper. He will immediately kill that Shadow Shaman who came in just in order to try to do some deep push. It kind of doesn't matter. This Lycan now, with that Basher, will immediately kill the Sand King. There's no buyback on that Shadow Shaman. And it's just, the, without the Poison Nova and with Storm Spirit going, okay guys, like, I can't do anything, so I'm just going to get this tower and hope for the best. So it looks like objective-wise, the Radiant might get away with this. It looks like there will be a sacrifice here on this clockwork. He's not exactly in a position to get himself out. And the Dire are very much likely looking to get away from this. They did burn the um, fortification on the tower, which saved it. Congratulations on that. That was a smart play there. So, you know, objective-wise, Radiant here did what they had to do, right? They knew that they couldn't really fight into it. They knew that um, that they they were, did, weren't in a position to use Poison Nova and combo their ultimates into anything spectacular. So, you know, Shadow Shaman getting caught out there, not what you want, but kind of expected at this point. He's, you know, he's still at 1260 HP. He still only has four armor. He's not exactly going to be the guy that has to go to that front. He should be staying back as far and as far back as he can. You know, it's really tempting. You've got that level four uh, ether shock, so you kind of want to do the deep push, but he, he's just too easy to kill at this point. We're going to take a look at some other dire, uh, excuse me, radiant items. It looks like you do have the blink dagger and we do have the four staff on that sand king. It looks like he's, you know, moving along, but kind of low on levels, level 14, doesn't have that level three ultimate yet, and trying to farm to his heart's content, going for more control, but again, no damage. Shadow Shaman, we just talked about him. He's doing okay, considering he, he's a very under-farmed Shadow Shaman against a Lycan who can just simply walk up to him and gobble him up for breakfast. But, you know, he's getting up there at level 11. He's going to have some more control, but again, it's just it's severely lacking at this point in terms of damage. We have the Storm Spirit, by far the most farmed hero on the Radiant side. 14,400 net worth. He does have a Bloodstone. He has 14 charges, so you know he's at least never lost a charge. So... That's good, but again, just, he's going to go for that Shiva's. He's trying to get more control. It just looks like they're trying to out-survive the Dire side, and I'm not sure if that's the strategy. Kunk is going to be sitting there with the Glimmer Cape. He will be able to save a certain amount of people, and, uh, you know, as always, Kunkka remains a tremendous support in terms of being able to control at the moment that that BKB starts winding down to some of its, you know, six or five second timers, you'll know that Kunkka will be able to get a lot of control out on that, uh, on that Lycan. And it looks like Venomancer, he's going to be happy sitting on that Ghost Scepter, or excuse me, yeah, Ghost Scepter and Hurricane Pike for now. Not exactly able to contest too much. Meanwhile, the Dire are going to be trying to establish map control. They are kind of being baited pretty hard by this, uh, creep skipping storm spirit but they will not be catching him anytime soon and so we'll have to wait and see it looks like you know the uh, aegis is gone from the lichen he has finished his abyssal blade at this point now if they do catch storm spirit in a fight it looks like storm spirit is instead he doesn't really have a reason to abyssal blade anybody else right nobody else has enough escape mechanics to get out of him like even if sand king burrow strikes away like who cares you force him to use a burrow stripe defensively which is exactly what you kind of need him to do anyways so i mean unless they're catching sand king um out entirely out uh, this this basher is for storm king alone Excuse me, this Abyssal Blade is for Storm King alone. Or Storm Spirit, holy cow, alone. So we will be seeing here, it's going to be the last Outer Tower from the Radiant going down. Looks like the Radiant aren't in a position to fight back. I doubt they're in a position to fight much of anything at this point, and we'll have to wait and see. <laughs> Meanwhile, Storm Spirit doing cheeky Storm Spirit things, doing some counter push, did some okay chip damage to that tower, but almost at this point, I think, you know, relying on split pushing with the storm spirit isn't exactly your safest bet because again who pushes faster at this point you know lycan can creep skip with wolves or 
just leave a lich out there to to do some of his own pushing and then come back in, or they could simply rely on boots of travels later, right? Like it's this technique is only going to hold them off for so long, and that damage continues to get worse. Storm Spirit is doing exactly what uh, what he needs to do, though. Looks like he is not comfortable being close to that at all. He will zip all the way back to base. And we'll grab that Shiva's guard. Yeah, a little Shiva's guard test to make sure that it's not a knockoff. We'll freeze his fountain. Meanwhile, Dyer moving up in the world. 17,000 net worth ahead. Kind of really far ahead on this one. You know, they're almost reaching that magical 20k mark where it becomes nearly impossible to beat them to it. But, you know, they're not there yet, and Radiant are going to rely on split pushing for now. Be a general nuisance that way. The moment Lightning gets close, well, there's that flyaway. Doesn't surprise me at all. But that's just it, right? It's a split push. It's it's what's keeping Dyer on their toes, and without that, uh, without that Roshan, even though he is spawning in only three seconds, <laughs> without that Roshan, it looks like they're not exceedingly comfortable going high ground. Although they could always just go and finish this tier 3 tower here at bottom and go get them themselves some shrines. And it looks like it might be what they're trying to do. Storm Spirit, of course, going to do cheeky things. Going to go push top, do some chit damage to that tier 3. But look at this. It's just, they're going to force a fortification. Oh, that is a big whiff on the clockwork. But it kind of doesn't matter. Looks like they will get the Hex and the Surround on the Lycan. Lycan doesn't seem to really care. He does have the BKB activated. And he will immediately go and kill Sand King. But, oh, not exactly. The Silence will go on a Storm Spirit, but it doesn't matter. It looks like this fight actually going a bit clumsy. That Storm Spirit is going to be notoriously hard to kill. He will just, you know, zip away. And it looks like this will be the kill on the Weaver unless he's managed to somehow get lucky. He's not going to get lucky. Luck isn't on his side. It might cost him his Lich as well. Lich will use his ultimate. It will s only hit on a single person, and so he will get away. There is a silence on the Lich. It's going to look like a pretty good return kill on the uh, Radiant side. They will be able to get three by the looks of it. Yep. Three deaths here by the looks of it. They will clean up everybody except the Lycan and the Venomancer. Or they will kill the Venom or uh, excuse me, Venomancer. I keep seeing Venomancer. It is Viper. Viper will get some return damage onto this Storm Spirit. It's not enough. It looks like it will be the death of Viper. So, you know, hey, there's a return. They've only, they've only managed to bring back more. So, forcing Viper to take kind of, or not Viper, forcing the entire Dire team to take kind of a really clumsy fight here. It's pretty decent, and it looks like it will pay off a little bit. They did knock out quite a bit, you know, 5,000. 300 or nearly 5,400 gold exchange is pretty decent here and everything expended BKBs and ultimates abound you know the whiff on the clockwork hook is bad enough but uh, kind of feeding into it and leaving Roshan undefended with the uh, with the radiant team you know maybe they, don't, they may not have anti-armor but they do have the ability to control into this but I'm not sure anymore oh gosh shadow shaman you have a very unfortunate life ahead of you. And with that pipe now finished on the Lich, it just feels so difficult to get this Roche. Right? And they will get the silence on the Weaver. Weaver is going to get killed here. Probably once that boat comes in, that'll be the death of him. So they will get a return kill, you know. And it was a Weaver for a Shadow Shaman. So that is a trade they'll take any day of the week. But here comes Lycan. He will war for him up and run, but looks like he's not going to commit to it. That uh, that BKB down to 7 seconds now. So it looks like we are going to have a Roche standoff. We're going to have the Radiant team here, mostly healed up, mostly full mana. Kind of ready to go, committing to it. No one really wants to be in. Roshvan sitting at comfortably 3 quarter health. Wondering what everybody's doing around his pit, having little, silly little fist fights. But there is another problem. It looks like it's just the push is going to have to be forced back by Shadow Shaman, which means that they know that they're in no trouble and will be able to get this Roshan by themselves. Right, That Frost Armor now having all the impact in the world. 
There is a pipe and there is a mech and it looks like Lich is way too tanky to kill. He's going to have to use this pipe very soon or he might die before it happens. He will get four stuff away. He will pipe. There will be a poison nova coming out and that ghost scepter is used in order to stop the uh, the attack from Lycan, but it doesn't seem to matter. This Venomancer will likely be going down. Shadow Shaman is sitting there, but here comes a nice ultimate from Sand King. It looks like it's going to catch on that, but we'll also stop, but that's just it, right? It's it's kind of irrelevant, and you know, although your Sand King is going to get away with your, your Storm Spirit, not so lucky. He was silenced and killed, and now your Sand King is also going to get annihilated. Meanwhile, Dire Creep doing what the Dire Team couldn't. We'll take out that range creep, or that range barracks. And we'll be... Now a full lane up, and Roche going to... Oh, not yet. I've spoken too soon. Will the Storm Spirit attempt a cheeky steal? Will he fly in? Oh, he flies in! He's going to be able to attack the Roshan. It would be killed by the Radiant, and the Dire will take the Aegis because he took the cheese on Storm Spirit. A bit unfortunate. Spam clicking, I'm sure. And meanwhile, Viper's like, I don't need Roshan and I don't need the Aegis nor the cheese. I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to right-click this tower sitting at half health, and if I die, I die. And he may do exactly that. So that will be the death of Viper, but this might also be the death of Shadow Shaman. I always say that because he dies so easily, but no, Weaver will get out, except for the part where he was four-staffed, possibly improperly, and will get himself killed. And so will Clockwork here. They will get no return kills. That's three people down from the Dire. They did get another tier three and some pretty decent chip damage into that range barracks. The melee barracks will, of course, heal, but uh, kind of a clumsy fight there from the Dire. Not exactly what they were looking for, I'm sure. Meanwhile, Storm Spirit has now become the top net worth in this game. He's got a cheese sitting in his inventory that accounts for quite a lot of it. I'm kidding. Uh, but, you know, he does have a Shiva's, he does have an Orchid's, he does have a a bloodstone, and he's perpetually difficult to kill, although he did go down in the last fight, and with that Lincolns that he's building, he's going to be impossible to bash, uh, or at least first hit uh, Abyssal, so there will be ha they will have to coordinate something in order to get control of him. I'm not sure if Lincolns is better than, uh, than BKB here. He does also need to get off that silence from the Viper. Viper is, of course sporting a bloodthorn and that is blood or excuse me that is storm spirits big nemesis so i'm really bad with hero names today just uh, one of those days i guess so well, you have to get around that eventually so it looks like radiant i wouldn't say quote unquote making a comeback but you know being a nuisance, another zip, and it looks like he will be getting away if he really needed to he could eat the cheese and probably make it all the way back to base but that's fine. BKB coming out of the Weaver, really tired of getting his butt controlled. Lincoln's is nice, BKB's better. And it looks like... Whoa, that will probably be the death of this Weaver here. There is the Viper coming in, and the Clockwork. That'll be the death of Shadow Shaman. He does manage to drop his wars down. That's relatively important. Storm Spirit doing as much damage as he can, but he's out of mana. He will have to eat that cheese if he wants to continue this fight. But it looks like he doesn't want to do that just yet. He's lost two already. He's lost both the Kunkka and the uh, Shadow Shaman. It feels like I keep saying Shadow Shaman is dying as, like, this continuously button stuck on repeat. That Venomancer ult will come out, so will the uh, stun from Sand King. Sand King does not have his ultimate. He doesn't have the mana for his ultimate. It also means he's going to die. He's going to have to buy back here. Looks like Storm Spirit doing as much as he can. He's used the shrine. He still has not used that cheese. The meanwhile, the ultimate from... Oh, here comes the ultimate from Sand King. Will do a tremendous amount of damage, hitting on three. It is going to kill that Lycan, but it is only the Aegis. Lich looks like he's just trying to get away. He does get used up. His clockwork will go down. Meanwhile... You know, Lycan, he's back. He's trying to do as much damage to this Storm Spirit as he can, but the cheese will get eaten. That is probably be the death of the Lycan. It'll be a second death, unless he can somehow get away. He is silenced. He is stunned. There is no way. It doesn't matter how tanky you are. There's just way too much control. He is going to wolf form away. He's, if he's got the armlet toggle, he's got something to worry about. Not enough. He will get himself killed by that Storm Spirit. Way too much mana. Way too much catch. Although that Lich will look like he survives. No, he's not going to survive. Storm Spirit will be able to catch him and kill him. So, 
pretty decent from the rain and a five man wipe here. You know, on the off the back of that storm spirit, doing what I said he needed to do, being able to control and do damage, it just looks like you know the dire kept getting split up and being forced to take those bad fights, Lycan having to uh, just you know, kind of having that blood haze over his eyes and just attacking the storm spirit that had a cheese and storm spirit timing it perfectly, knowing that there was no burst that could suddenly kill him. And suddenly we have a radiant team that has come back from the brink of death. You know, I, I wouldn't say they're doing fantastic, but they might be able to get a tier three barracks out of this and, and being able to get some map control back. Storm spirit is now so difficult to kill. He you know, he's probably going to get a Boots of Travel next and then probably possibly build into a BKB or if he really needs to, he'll go into more damage. Shadow Shaman is going to drop his wards, of course. He is level 19. He doesn't quite have the plus four wards and it looks like Weaver is going to try to do some cleanup here. But that fight, you know, it starts with a bad Weaver uh, pick off. He does, you know, they do end up doing a lot of damage and quote unquote winning that fight. But the dive was just, it was just too much, and it looks like Radiant has at least evened out the mid lane, even if they couldn't even out any other lane, and with that clockwork hook not being able to impact on anyone, it looks like this, this push is over. Radiant, man, really surprising here, coming back, and yeah, patience from Joe, just not giving up, and being able to kind of established some dominance off this back of the storm spirit off the back of this control from venomancer and from kunkka right and all this damage reduction is super uh excuse me super uh, important to to being able to to stop what lycan and, and viper and, and weaver can do here but it looks like the dire you know they're still in a pretty hefty position ak gold ahead uh one and a half eh, one lane ahead right considering the lanes have essentially almost evened out it was a ranged barracks for uh, a melee barracks so the the radiant are a little ahead but this is now super dangerous the silence will come out on storm spirit storm spirit probably going to be forced to commit suicide here but he's going to get bashed instead and that'll be the death of storm spirit 35 second he does have a buyback so it's not the end of the world for the radiant but it is a huge commitment that they didn't want to go into Looks like he actually might even just be able to wait out the timer. Honestly, 20 seconds is not a very long time. He still has 14 charges on that bloodstone, probably sitting around 20 by the time he died. And so, looks like the dire, you know, happy with the kill, uh, no doubt. All right, killing the number one net worth hero in the game, and then giving it, uh, giving it, you know, I guess you're a clockwork on that point, but, but you know, but getting him out of the map for a little while is super important. Reducing those bloodstone charges is also super important. So, we'll have to wait and see where we go from here. They do have to, they know they have to force that Lincolns, which is kind of why I like that BKB purchase on that Storm Spirit a little bit better, right? Once that's how that comes out, you BKB and then you run away. The Lincolns is really nice, but the, the Dire have enough ways to get rid of it, so. It's, it may be standard, but I think that BKB is super important, and it looks like he is not going to go for BKB right away. He's actually going to finish up that Bloodthorn after he bought that uh, Boots of Travel. And we'll have to see if this Radiant Smoke is going to be able to accomplish something. It is super dangerous. Uh, they got Vision on the Storm Spirit here. He is going to get away. And it looks like they were just willing to waste everybody's time while they killed Clockwork. A disarm on that Lycan. Very good choice here. It probably won't be enough. It looks like this the Sand King is trying to buy as much time as he can. Meanwhile, Storm Spirit is going on to this, uh, excuse me, to this Weaver. He is doing a tremendous amount of damage. Weaver does manage to time lapse away, wasting quite a bit of time. Viper is going to be going on to this Storm Spirit. Storm Spirit having enough to get away. He can zap away. And that will break his Lincolns as well. So it looks like it's a Clockwork for a Sand King and a Kunkka at this point. So that will be an advantage to the Dire. Once again, it just feels like once that Dire is bunched up, and if you can't get that Sand King ultimate off, it just feels like there's not much that you can do. And for whatever reason, Storm Spirit didn't stun Lycan out of his ultimate transformation. And once he tried to put the stone on, the BKB was already out, so it's not like they had much to do. Looks like Dyer are looking to go win this lane. That will be a pretty good move here by the Storm Spirit, but this looks like it's going to be his death. He will go down. He will have to buy back here if he wants to do anything. The buyback from Storm Spirit is committed. He will still lose the barracks. He will fly out. will kill the Weaver very likely here. That Silent Stick doing a tremendous amount of work. Weaver will go down 97 seconds on the sideline. Does not have a buyback, but he does lose the barracks, and he runs away. That also costs a buyback from the Shadow Shaman, but at this point, what else is new? He's not going to get any richer. 
And at this point, he only pretty much exists to drop words and die. Which, you know, is a mean way of putting it, but unfortunately it is true. He's just, he's very easy to kill, and uh, the Dire do have a whole bunch of ways of getting in that backline and disrupting him. And if they stop him from dropping those wards, then the Radiant lose quite a bit of what they can do. So it might be what they're looking to do, although it looks like Storm Spirit's doing a pretty good job of taunting, so to speak. And making sure that they focus on him. He is finally below 12 Bloodstone Charges, which means he's officially lost Bloodstone Charges from when he's bought it. But, you know, still doing pretty well for himself. He's ramping up the damage. Once that uh, Bloodthorn comes out, he will be able to probably burst down quite a few heroes. Lich and possibly even Viper, though it's hard to say. Viper is very tanky and he's going into a very late BKB here. You know, that 10 second BKB on a Viper is going to be demonstrably difficult to deal with. So we'll have to kind of wait and see on that one. Looks like Dyer still have both their shrines up. Radiant map advantage has never been any good, so they'll have to kind of chip at it if they want to have any chance. Man, Blink Dagger on Shadow Shaman. Naked Blink Dagger. Still, pretty good. If you can get to that Lycan before the Lycan pops his ultimate or his BKB, then that Blink Hex can do all sorts of work, right? Looks like Soren Spirit is going to be getting as much control as he can here. You know, spotlight's all on him. It's The entire game is on his shoulders, which is difficult, right? Because the Dire, up to, back up to their 18k advantage, they have kind of three heroes that they can rely on. Weaver maybe less than some because he hasn't built a tremendous amount of damage yet, but he's hard to kill and super disruptive in the back. And if you let that Swarm do its damage and its armor reduction, then you are in trouble. Look, it's going to be two smokes missing each other, as Toby would say, like ships in the night. But it does leave the Radiant looking to get an advantage here. The smokes will break. It will go on to that uh, Weaver. It will hold that Weaver down. All that damage. The Weaver is going to BKB. The wards are dropped. The Venomancer ultimate is dropped. The boat has also go down. Shadow Shaman is the first one to die. Looks like Storm Spirit trying to get away from the fight. The Venomancer, he will probably just go Scepter. I don't know if he gets killed for this. Yes, he does. Meanwhile, the Lich ultimate is bouncing. Lich likely to go down to Storm Spirit, but does is tanky thanks to that, both that pipe and that uh, mechanism, but will eventually go down as he does walk back into the wards. Meanwhile, it's going to be a stun onto Storm Spirit. He is going to be pushed out of the cog. Still has a tremendous amount of mana, but he is getting low. He will get that stun off. Into the wards will die, but will take Viper along with him. Those wards doing a lot of damage. Like I said, once those wards are down, Shadow Shaman drop into the floor isn't exactly a problem. But it's still bad, right? It's still the death of the Storm Spirit, and he does not have a buyback. Meanwhile, that Lycan, you know, sitting at half health, enough to do enough damage, has his BKB back up, has his ultimate back up. At this point, could do all sorts of damage, get it into Mega Keep territory. With that Weaver, buyback on the Venomancer is there. It is not nighttime. That Howl is going to be a little less effective. It looks like he's just going to go into Wolf form, armlet toggle his way into a victory. Pops his BKB, utterly ignores the Sand King ultimate, and then runs away. He forced a buyback, forced an ultimate, and still got that range barracks to half health. It will regen, of course, but still showing just what the two of them can do, right? And now they're just going to run back and get Roche. It is a little dangerous. The Radiant doesn't look like they have all the vision there. As a matter of fact, they have no vision there. So, that's no good for them. So it looks like it's going to be a free Roshan on the side of the Dire. Lycan will pick it up, get rid of his boots in order to do it. And it looks like we are going to have your fourth Roshan go down. No cheese to be stolen this time. Cheese instead going to that Weaver. Hey, is going to be picked up by Clockwork. Clockwork has now a Scepter to go along with his items, looking to get a whole lot of lockdown. I'm not sure if he has enough survivability to do more than one hook, but if he misses one, at least it won't be long before he can get a second. I would have maybe liked to see some a blade mail pickup or or something to give his team some some fight back here, just because he's he's not tanky enough to get into a fight twice, I don't think. But I could be wrong. He could be positioning himself more smarter than I thought. He could always, you know, yeah hook cog force himself out and then do it all over again looks like dire will use another one of their smokes so we'll make his way into the radiant jungle the radiant at this point not looking to leave their base except for storm of course the only one who can looks like storm has queued up a divine rapier we'll have to see if that ever actually comes into fruition 
I don't think he's your best Divine Rapier carry, but he is a Divine Rapier carry. Meanwhile, Kunkka, he's still relying on that Heaven's Howard in order to disarm Lycan. If Lycan isn't BKB'd, it is a problem for Lycan to deal with. That hook will miss. It looks like they are going to go on that Venomancer, but he will simply go Shroud away. And it looks like it will be a disarmed Lycan. He will... Holy crap, it looks like there's nothing is happening. The wards come out, the boats come out. Viper is doing as much damage as he can on top of the Venomancer. Venomancer ult comes down, but that will actually get two kills. Both Clockwork and Lich are dead. The Sand King ultimate will come out and do as much damage as he possibly can into that Lycan. The Lycan will go down, but that is the Aegis expended. Storm Spirit, low health, will zap away. The Viper is probably going to go down, but will not. Instead, he will kill the Sand King. There will be a Lycan ultimate comes out. Does get hit by the Kunkka Torrent. The, the uh, excuse me. The Shadow Shaman will do some damage, and Storm Spirit will come in and get the final kill. So it looks like it's a three-man down situation for the Dire with the Aegis and the Cheese. Uh, Aegis expended, Cheese still in Weaver's inventory. They did get the melee barracks down, but it did cost them a lot. Again, if you just if you let the Radiant drop those ultimates on you, if you don't stop at least one, it just looks like that damage is way too hard to account for. So again, the Radiant. It's a defense, it's not the nicest one, and it did cost some buybacks, I'm sure. Yeah, it looks like we have a buyback on Venomancer, relatively, I don't think it was this fight, but relatively recently expended. Storm Spirit still has a minute left to go, and so does a Shadow Shaman. A less, little less than four minutes on Sand King, so it is bad, but they are going to try to force some buybacks here out of the Dire. I think they might get one. Um, actually, I sincerely doubt they'll get one. <laughs> the Viper can hold his ground, and Weaver is now about to get a kill on Kunkka. So, but here we go, the Viper will come out, we get a silence, onto that Storm Spirit, Storm Spirit in a lot of trouble, VKB is popped from Weaver, that will get the kill on Storm Spirit, Storm Spirit does not have a buyback, the Venomancer comes in, ultimates and immediately go shrouds, and then forces himself away, attempting to get away, that slow is pretty good, will probably get the kill on Viper, but will get a return death in, in reply, Viper will go down, but that Weaver doing a tremendous amount of damage, and that Clockwork somehow surviving all the way through this, will possibly still go down, will go down to the Venomancer with poison, but he's back. He will buy back. It looks like the Viper bought back as well. They know that the Storm Spirit has no buyback. They know that the Venomancer has no buyback. And they know that at this point, they can just buy back, force down the top lane, get the um, Mega Creeps, and, and finish this game off. It looks like Lycan, with his buyback, or excuse me, with his buyback not expended, will simply teleport top. He has his boots, and he's ready to rock and roll over here. That will be the Storm Spirit buyback. Like I said, it only had a minute left. He will go back. He immediately goes on the Weaver, but he pops the Lincolns, which doesn't kill him. Will he be able to kill the Weaver off? Yes, they will. Weaver is already dead. Lycan doing so as much damage as he can. We'll go on that Shadow Shaman. Glimmer Cape saving him for now. The wards are dropped. Looks like Lycan might actually have to back up here. That ward doing a tremendous amount of damage, but the Lich ultimate doing as much damage as it can. The Sankin ultimate has now come in. We'll probably kill that Lycan off, but that's the Shadow Shaman dead once again. Storm Spirit has also uh, hit the grave once more, and so will this Sand King Viper with his buyback coming back during a tremendous amount of damage. Lycan again has bought back. Kunkka will die. This looks like it's going to be GG. There's not much they can do. This Shadow Shaman with his negative HP will go down and a rampage will go the way of Viper and end this game. 56 minutes, long game, but kind of felt like it started getting out of control for the Radiant at about 30 minutes in and onwards. So we're going to go to game two. I'll see if I cast it or not, depending on how this one sounded. Anyways, see you later, guys.